Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. But I do want to start with the New Orleans Saints. Um, yesterday, when we get went on the air, we knew that the Derek Carr situation was not great, but not catastrophic. We, we weren't sure exactly what the diagnosis was when we came on. Now, during the show, we kind of found out, yeah, it's it's not going to be catastrophic. But Dennis Allen did meet with the media and talked about what the situation is with his starting quarterback. He was much better today than he was yesterday. Um, we're going to continue to evaluate him. And when he's healthy enough that he can go out and perform and, and do the things that he needs to do to give our uh, – team a chance to win, then, then he'll be back in there. And so I can't tell you when that's going to be. Um, people heal at different rates. And um, there's been players that have played with this injury in, in one week. Um, there's been players that it you know takes a couple weeks. So we'll just have to wait and see. The report is that it's an AC joint sprain. Uh, I've never sprained my AC joint, and I've never played NFL quarterback. So um, I can't tell you exactly what the situation is there, but to me, just <laughs> as a very, very novice viewer and non-medical professional, I'd be like, well, you sprain your throwing shoulder joint. I, I got to think you're going to miss a couple of games, right? I mean, it, it, is it unreasonable for me to think that this might be two or three weeks? That's that's what it feels like to me. Now, if he goes out there and plays on Sunday, more power to him. Um, that's quick healing and toughness, and that's great. I didn't think Joe Burrow should have been out there last night, and he played. They won the game. So um, this feels to me like it's going to be a few weeks. And this is the quintessential discussion that you have when you start a football season about what is your backup quarterback. If you're, starting, if you're the Jets and your starting quarterback misses the entire season, I don't care who you are. Your chances, in my opinion, of having a really strong season and meeting the goals and, and playing deep into the playoffs are almost zero. Yeah, Drew Bledsoe got hurt, and that worked out okay for the Patriots. Got it. And you can come up with some situations here or there. The 49ers did a great job last year dealing with quarterback injuries. It's not impossible to succeed over the course of three months with a backup. It's incredibly unlikely. The more likely situation is that, hey, your quarterback has got an AC joint sprain, has got, you know, a broken finger, has got has got something, and we're going to miss two or three weeks. Can your backup function for a couple of weeks? And that is what I believe the Saints situation is becoming over the next month. Jameis Winston's your backup. Do I want him to be the quarterback for 17 weeks? I do not. Hunt Palmer, not interested in Jameis Winston be in the face of your NFL franchise for 17 games. Can he function for three? I think he can. But we have to frame this accurately. Because I think when Jameis Winston's name pops up, the first thought is, okay, this guy threw for 5,109 yards in an NFL season. A 5,000-yard passer. He led the NFL in passing yards. Wow. Wow. And you would also pretty quickly pivot to, and he also threw 30 interceptions that year. Those are the two stats that immediately come to mind with Jameis Winston. But that was four years ago. It was with a different coach on a different roster. The Saints signed him, and Breeze got hurt in 2020, and, ta and, and Jameis Winston did not start a single game. They, they went with Taysom Hill. Decided that was a better option for the Saints. I think that said a lot. Said a lot to me. Now, some would say, well, Sean Payton's just trying to be the smartest guy in the room. He took this quarterback gadget guy out of BYU, and he was going to make that work. Whatever. I, I kind of look at it as he thought Taysom Hill probably gave him the best chance. If he thought that Jameis gave him the best chance, but he just wanted to be the smartest guy in the room, so he put Tame, Taysom Hill out there, then you got a whole different issue. But I think they thought Taysom Hill gave him the best shot. In 2021, Jameis started seven games. He never threw for 280 yards in any of those games. He threw for under 150 yards in three of those games. He did a better job of taking care of the ball, 14 touchdowns to three interceptions, but then he got hurt against 
the Bucks, Devin White's horse collar, missed the rest of that year. You remember the video of him dancing in the locker room on crutches after he got hurt. Then in 2022, he started the first three games last year. In the second half of week one against Atlanta, he was really, really good. And for that game, he was 23 of 34, threw for 269, threw two touchdowns. Michael Thomas had a big game, and he didn't turn it over, didn't throw an interception in that game. But weeks two and three against Tampa and Carolina weren't good. 50 of 81 for 589, which is okay. Two touchdowns, five interceptions. And in the game against Tampa, he was sacked six times and threw three picks. Andy Dalton came in after the injury. Jameis was healthy and ready to play at the end of the season. They went with Andy Dalton in that spot. The Saints coaching staff doesn't have a massive amount of trust in Jameis Winston, in my opinion, based on the fact that Andy Dalton and Taysom Hill got chances over two different staffs over Jameis Winston. Now, Winston was a starter last year, but once it came to big football games in November, when Jameis was healthy enough to play, he didn't. So, this framing Jameis Winston as a quarterback who threw for 5,000 yards and threw for 30 touchdowns and has this number one overall pick skill set is probably not the case right now with the quarterback he is today. This is a quarterback who has not been a full-time starter since 2019. That was four years ago. He's been hurt. He sat on the bench. He's had limited practice reps because he hasn't been the starting quarterback. Do I think he's a solid backup? I do. Do I think that's the way we need to talk about Jameis Winston? I do. Now, if Jameis Winston stepped into the Eagles situation with an elite offensive front and great weapons, I'd feel really good about that. But Jameis Winston stepping into an offensive line that has been awful, in my opinion, a running game that has not gotten going at all, and an offense that's really been stuck in the mud. So I'm a little concerned with Jameis Winston playing with a poor running game against a defense that can pin its ears back and and come after him as a pass rushing team because you're behind the chains a lot. And at that point, I start to worry about the interceptions. The Saints are going to have to figure out a way to play better up front and to get some sort of running game going for Jameis Winston. That remains to be seen. Dennis Allen was asked yesterday, say, hey, so how do you get this thing going? Well, ultimately, I think those things start up front. You know, I think I think we've done a good job of identifying where we're going. I don't know that we've, you know, always gotten to those spots every time. So we, we had some plays in the game that that got us ahead of the sticks, and yet there then there's a there's a penalty of some sort, which then puts you back into a, a negative situation. So obviously that's something that we got to get cleaned up. And, uh, you know, I, I, I recognize that everybody's frustrated with that, and, and yet we are too. And, and we know that that's an area that we've got to improve. I'm not trying to be uh, an energy, uh, injury prognosticator here. Uh, I'm just going to throw out a reasonable guess. Is that that's doable, a reasonable guess? I'm going to guess that Derek Carr misses the next three games. Maybe it's one, maybe it's five, maybe it's two, maybe it is three. I think three is a reasonable guess. And that's what it is, a guess. Those three are the Buccaneers at home and road trips to New England and Houston. The Bucs are actually the team that Jameis has has played against a lot. You remember the Devin White uh, game that I was talking about back in 2021? And then last year he did play against Tampa in a game that he was sacked six times and, and had three interceptions. Now, this is a different Tampa team. They're 24th in the NFL in pass defense. They're 12th in the NFL in run defense. It's been a pretty average defense. New England's played good defense thus far. They're fifth in pass defense, ninth in run defense. We know they got a defensive-minded head coach. And the Texans, all they do, they do have a defensive-minded head coach. Stingley's out on IR. They're not great on defense. So, is it possible for the Saints to get through these two games at two and one. That's, in my opinion, the goal with Jameis Winston. Your defense is playing lights out. You're dealing with Baker Mayfield, Mac Jones, and C.J. Stroud. If you think, and it's reasonable in my opinion, to think that the Saints' defense 
can hold these teams to 20 or less, as they've done for 11 straight games, is Jameis good enough to pilot the offense, to get them around 24 points, and not turn the football over and compromise this defense has played so well? That's the biggest deal for Jameis. Be the guy that you were in 2021 through those seven games where you had 14 touchdowns and three picks. It was a conservative offense. They ran the ball a lot. It was a lot of short passes. And hey, you got to take a sack here or there or throw it away and punt. We can do that because the defense is okay. Just don't jeopardize the defense by being the guy that turns the ball over like you did last year in two weeks span. You turn it over five times via the interception. That's what it's going to take for the Saints. I don't feel awesome about it, but it's doable. This is the role of the backup quarterback. Not to play 17 games. You're not going to win very many divisions or playoff games if that's your case. But you got a backup quarterback out there for the entire season like the Jets do this year. However, in a span where you got to get through three games with a backup quarterback, the Saints did it with Teddy Bridgewater. They did it with Taysom Hill. They've done it in the past with a different staff. They've got to find a way to do it with Jameis Winston. And to me, that's finding a way to go 2-1 and one through the next three. At that point, you're four and two, and you feel like you're probably atop the division. Would help if your win was against one of one of the wins was against the Bucks this week. You're probably atop the division. We'll see. Hey, it's on. Thanks for watching Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button, leave your comments in the section below, and hit that subscribe button so you get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints. We'll see you next time.